I have a bit of a habit of buying cheap electronics when I see them on eBay and 50 555 timers for less than £1.50 seem like a good buy and I've never used them before. So while I was waiting for these chips to arrive I looked at Wikipedia to find out what they're all about and there are two pins on here, the trigger and the threshold. Here they're connected with the trigger here on the orange wire and the threshold on the green wire and they're two inputs um, which are voltage driven at different voltages and depending on whether they're low or high depends on whether the output is on or off and that got me to thinking that's quite like a solar charge controller so when both trigger and threshold are low, they're grounded, the output is on. So if we imagine using this as a solar charge controller, this would be at a very low battery level. So imagine that our battery level was rising, the trigger goes high, connected to 5 volts, the output of this chip stays on, we'd still connect our solar panels to our battery. As the voltage increased and the trigger, sorry, the threshold pin goes high, so we've reached our upper charging limit, the output goes off and the uh, solar panels get disconnected from the batteries. So as that battery level creep back down again, below our upper limit and then eventually below our lower limit the light comes on again the output would come on so this would be a very simple switching solar charge controller now originally I did just think we could just power this 555 straight from the lead acid battery it's going to attempt to charge and that's because it's got quite a wide voltage range uh, about 3 to 18 volts I think it is but remember to check your data sheet if you're thinking about using one of these however the problem there is that that means as the battery voltage goes up and down the control pin voltage will go up and down respectively which makes it difficult to um, calculate the voltage dividers so I think I'm going to need to use a regulator, a voltage regulator, and I'm going to use, uh, this is a 7809, so it's going to supply 9 volts to this chip, so I'm going to have to think about my voltage divider here, the trigger will trigger at 3 volts, one third of the supplied voltage to this chip, and the threshold will trigger at 6 volts, two thirds. So with all that in mind, using one of these online uh, voltage divider calculators, if my low voltage point is 11.8 volts, and I need that to be around the output voltage of 3 volts, because that's one third of 9 volts, making the maths a bit easy, I need to work out the resistor values. Well, I've put in 10K here, because I've got quite a lot of 10K 1% uh, resistors. So we need to work out R1, and if I close that, so what's that, 29,333, and with my high voltage point at 13.5, and that's the threshold remember, so we need 6 volts, 2 thirds of 9 volts, again I'll put 10k in, so that's 12.5k. So looking through my resistor box here, I've got some, like I said, new add 10k resistors there. These are 20k, so one of those and one of those makes 30. And I've also got some 2k2s, uh, and all of these should be 1%, but I think I'll check them on my meter first. So once again, apologies because it's all a bit of a mess, but that's prototyping on breadboards, isn't it? Um, so we're imagining that my lead acid battery is 
three four volts and we now have the nine volt regulator here and let me just try and get those out of the way two voltage dividers so on this side there's a 2.2k a 10k and on the lower side of the voltage divider a 10k and on this side we have uh, the 10k a 20k on the upper side and the 10k on the lower side to give us those three and six volts hopefully at about the right place so the charge controller would be on at the moment because the battery is low and as that voltage increases hopefully we'll get up to about 13 and a half and the charge controller goes off it's a little bit low I've used slightly higher uh, resistor values than we calculated so 3.3 volts and again as the voltage comes down again so at the moment 12.2 volts and the LED came back on well for a quick mashup I think that's a reasonable result of course I've only been turning on and off an LED at the moment and that's no good for a charge controller so I need to think about how I'm going to control switching of the solar panel to the battery now I did look online and somebody else has created a solar charge controller and won a prize for it I believe using the 555 timer but that um, circuit is a bit more complicated than mine um, and they used a standard relay this is a 5 volt relay but as I found with my automatic grid tie switch relays consume quite a bit of power so I'm thinking a MOSFET and these end channel MOSFETs and I've got a few of these it's the 3205 the same as used in the Arduino solar charge controller however I don't think I'll put these in the positive side uh, using Julian's um, design of a charge pump or anything like that because again that's getting all rather complicated I'll make this simple and I'll put these on the negative side so this is my circuit with the battery on the left hand side here and the solar panel up here on the right coming in via a blocking diode the end channel MOSFET on the negative side 555 timer in the middle the MOSFET connected to the output two voltage dividers connected to trigger and threshold and the 7809 providing the power for the circuit so this is the plan I've built this in dia again the end channel MOSFET the 3205 um, the gate here connects to the control pin of the 555 the 7809 providing 9 volts to the 555 uh, there's the input and the output capacitor there these two voltage dividers coming from the battery voltage so 20k and 10k and then 10k here stood on its end and then the other one over here which is a 10k and a 2k2 onto the threshold pin here and then a 10k back down to ground and reset is pulled high with this wire which I'm going to hide underneath the 555 so here it is here we are the 7809 3205 the 555 two voltage dividers and a couple of capacitors and we took 15 20 minutes at most to solder up so we've got the battery positive here for the voltage divider um, and to power the whole circuit through the 7809 and then this is the solar negative and the battery negative so the, the solar coming in here will actually go straight through to the battery positive and doesn't go anywhere near this circuit because I'm using a 3205 
it's an n-channel MOSFET so we're switching in the negative side of the circuit. In the background you can see one of my meters and um, a sealed lead acid battery so the idea is I'm going to plug this in and I've also got some solar panels here 30 watts of monocrystalline solar panels I'm going to hopefully see that battery voltage increase good luck everybody so that's the circuit powered up and then the solar panels are plugged in um, let me turn that down to a more accurate range. There is a bit of sun at the moment, which is odd because it's early January. Um, on one of my 50 watt panels, I'm getting 8 watts coming in. And that battery voltage perhaps is creeping up. 13.9 volts, I would have expected it to turn off by now. I'm getting a little bit worried. I think I may have to disconnect this and see if we can work out what's going on. So I'm still having trouble and I think I've realised why. It's because I'm an idiot. And I think the battery should be connected here to the drain pin and the solar panel should be connected to the source pin. So what I'm going to have to do is cut this track here and put a jumper in to get the um, battery negative, as it will become, to the negative rail here. Okay, so the battery's at 12.7 volts. I've had a little lamp on it to get the battery voltage down a little bit. Uh, the sun's gone in, so I'm using my Ming He adapter here. 17.5 volts it's set to and 200 milliamps. Um, the charge controller now has that little link wire in and it's been cut so the battery negative um, sorry the battery negative here and the solar negative is now here battery positive is where it was so let's plug it in and try it so plug it into the battery and plug it into what is going to be my solar panel for this test try and get everything in one shot what I suspect will happen is this should go into constant current mode delivering those 200 milliamps until the battery reaches 13.3 13.4 something like that and then we should see it go into constant voltage mode which means the MOSFET has switched off that's the theory anyway good luck everyone so yeah, we're in constant current mode, so I'm sure that power is coming from here into the battery via the charge control, of course. The battery voltage is creeping up, which confirms that. So the battery voltage is still rising. There is a tiny, there is a bit of warmth in the MOSFET, um, but nothing worrying. And look. We've now gone into constant voltage mode, we've hit the limit, the MOSFET has switched off, now the battery will hover around there, probably for a little bit. So I think I've finally cracked it. Well it's taken a bit of messing around, but I have managed to get this solar charge controller working. It is the most simple of solar charge controllers I've made based on the 555 timer. It's got the fewest components, therefore it is also the cheapest, and it will maintain a battery. Um, so I'm quite pleased with it. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and this little exploration of the 555 timer, and I hope you'll join me next time for my next video. Thanks for watching.